Let's talk about design tools. It's 2020 and there's a lot of app options out there today for designing UI and prototypes. I wanna talk about Sketch and FrameRx. Sketch has been around for some time now and it's probably one of the most popular and common design tools known today. FrameRx, on the other hand, is pretty new and you'll see lots of features that no other design tools offer. And in fact, companies like Google, Facebook, Uber use them for product design and development. They're both competitive tools. What I'm not gonna talk about is who's the winner. There's no such thing as win or lose. What I'm going to do is give you an idea of where these products are positioned in terms of capabilities and what consequences you should expect when you choose one over the other. While many reviews talk about the differences in the ease of use or preferences they have over the other when doing certain tasks, I won't talk about much about that. Instead, I wanna talk about how do they fit it into a real life product development workplace and does it have a future? So let's get into it. First, I wanna talk about Sketch. If I were to describe Sketch in one word, I'd like to choose the word orthodox. What do I mean by that? I mean conforming to what's generally accepted as right or that it's established and approved by the general, right? I say this because Sketch is like a template for today's many design tools or the most expected skills from UX UI designers. Many new design tools out there like Figma, Adobe XD, these are very much like Sketch. And in fact, I think they're built similarly because Sketch sort of established the standard for a typical UI design tool. It's also that these new players want users to easily transition from Sketch to their own. In other words, among tools like Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD, I don't think there's much of a consequences in choosing one over the other because the nature of work for these tools are pretty similar. And on top of that, missing features can always be compensated by third-party plugins or apps. In fact, Sketch has probably the biggest community among all the design tools, and there's very good chance you can find features you're looking for, either in a form of free plugins or a separate app that works well with. If you take UX UI classes, there's a very high likelihood that they're going to teach you in Sketch as well. If you're looking for a job in the field, you may see a mix of Sketch or Adobe XD, but again, if you can use either one of them, then you likely won't get rejected for not knowing the other tool. It's that minimal of a difference. Let's talk about some of the Sketch's attraction. Sketch is made very easy for designers to do their designer thingies, like create and organize layer styles, text styles, and use them systematically. There's plenty of features to help you get elements justified and lined up, and achieve pixel perfect design if you put in that effort. There's a relatively new feature called library that allows you to save assets like symbols or styles separately and import them to use globally. This helps modulate symbols and isolate the concerns of components from your comp design. It's great when you're building a design system. If you're wondering what about Figma or what about XD? Now here's the deal. Figma is free, browser-based, and allows multiple users to edit the same file at the same time, like Google Docs. So if you just don't wanna pay, or if you're using PC, or if you wanna poke the files together with your buddies, then Figma is great to try out. XD is like you took Sketch and Envision and a few other plugins and jammed them all together. So if your company already has Adobe Suite license, then great, you can try it out. XD is also supported in PC. Again, in my opinion, if you want a general design prototyping tool, then whether Sketch, Figma, or XD, these are all great. And once you get used to one, you won't even care for the differences that much. But going back to Sketch, Sketch isn't the most flashy tool with hip colors and marketing, but Sketch respects its community and is widely collaborative. So it allows you to choose what additional functions or platform you wanna introduce in your design and collaboration workflow with your team. Finally, I wanna talk about, does it have a future? While Sketch has created sort of the standard for design tools, it's at its pretty high maturity level, at least today. Sketch is definitely the safest place to be today as a UX UI designer, and you won't feel like you're short of anything. But UI design, different from tools like Photoshop, the output of the design tool is not the final output of the product. It's just a step in between. Because once you're done, you have to hand off to the engineers to build it. So in the future, if 
the products and development process evolves, there could be a new disruptive tools that changes the way we design prototypes. Sketch will probably continue to adapt to the changes with its wide community support, but so far it's unlikely that the Sketch developers will make a huge shift in the product direction. It may be a matter of time, maybe five years or so, before it becomes the older tool to use. Now let's talk about FrameRx. FrameRx, in one word, or, or a few, is a production-ready UI design tool. FrameRx allows the designers to actually develop production-ready UI using codes. Now when you hear that, you may think, oh god, I don't, I don't touch codes. That sounds far off my reach. But let me tell you. When you open the app, it's surprisingly simple and familiar. In fact, you can do the majority of the things you do in Sketch right in FrameRx. While FrameRx expects some coding knowledge to be used in full capacity, it comes with unique tools that allow you to do animated effects without coding, like stack elements, scroll within a frame, carousel, even effects like modal and flyout. Now the Sketch-like part is just a visual tool. Again, with its coding capability, Framework X can literally build any UI components that function however we intend them to. We can even use existing code libraries like packages or UI kits built by and shared by others. In fact, you can even build a working app UI just in Framework X. For those who don't plan to learn to code, don't use it. You better, you're better off with Sketch. It's not for you. For those who are open-minded about it, I know it still sounds a bit overwhelming, but if you're a designer or plan to be a designer, then there are three good reasons why FrameRx can be appealing. The first reason is it saves you and engineers so much time. Until not long ago, UX UI designers and software engineers were kinda in their own separate space, doing their respective works, designers designing experience and visuals, and engineers coding UI. But in an ideal world in product development, these two roles were supposed to understand each other more than anyone. Because though the actual skills and tasks are different, they're both supposed to be building the same thing. So for this reason, year after year, their distance inevitably got closer and closer. And now today, designers and engineers are just about to have an overlap. This is where Framework X is credited its value. Framework X and product development allows both designers and engineers to develop UI, referencing the same source of truth. Now, why is that a value? Because it gives designers reassurance that what they use is the updated and correct design. Traditionally, design tools only output visual arts and slides, and at most styles and size specifications, these get handed off to the engineers and engineers have to build a UI from scratch based on these designer-centric handoffs. When engineers build them, the finished UI isn't one-to-one -one with the handoff, kind of unavoidable because designers and engineers speak different languages. So designers had to find the discrepancy, create a ticket for the engineers to fix the UI, then review the fixes and repeat these rounds over and over. Often in reality, discrepancies get overlooked and gradually designers UI library and production UI library turn inconsistent. FrameRx on the other hand allows designers to build UI that's virtually close to production UI. So handoff is smooth. In addition, when engineers updated the UI and components, designers will see the changes in their library. To give you a Lego analogy, it's like designers design illustrated instructions for how to build a Lego house, right? And engineers had to read this flat instruction to create the physical Lego blocks. You can easily see how this instruction can get misinterpreted or short of information. But with FrameRx, it's like designers can now create the 3D models of the Lego blocks, build a virtual house, and hand off the 3D files. Once engineers updated the blocks, designers can see that update to their virtual blocks. This ultimately means both you and engineers are gonna save so much bandwidth maintaining the design system and stay happy together. Airbnb was trying to do something similar by developing their own Sketch plugins, but with FrameRx, it's natively supported. Now, the second point is FrameRx makes a great place for you to start learning front-end coding. While traditional front-end classes put you on software like Visual Studios and teach you from the very basics, starting with HTML, CSS, 
what's a DOM, and all that. Frameworks allows mixing both codes and vector tools to design UI. This helps us to selectively learn and apply codes as necessary. So you can decide how high to set your bars. While Framework still has a small community and few resources due to its short presence, Framework provides many very well-designed resources like instructions, actually readable documentations, step-by-step -step video tutorials. It's one of the first platforms that's both educational and powerful as a tool. And the last point is that it's super future-proof. Framework supports a language called TypeScript. TypeScript is like an evolved version of the already popular JavaScript. And it's also an approved internal development language used at Google. TypeScript is set to be a very future-proof language. And basically all you need to know to be a technical UI designer and with this TypeScript, you'll be likely using React. React, as of today, is the most popular and effective JavaScript library made for UI development. React is developed by Facebook, and it's very likely going to stick around for a while. So whether you use Framework X or not, you want to learn about this. And Framework X, with its constant update and added features, is definitely gonna stay as a strong candidate to be the next generation standards. And hey, if they can't sell in, still what you learn from using it is going to be the most valuable and the future-proof skills. So again, Framework shouldn't be out of your scope just because it asks for coding skills for these three reasons. It's time-saving for both designers and engineers, it's a perfect entry point for learning front-end codes, and it's super future-proof. All right. What did you guys think about Sketch in comparison to Frameworks? Sketch is an orthodox design tool that's high demanded and has large user population. Pros are its designer-friendly features and low learning curve. The ease to look for resources thanks to the widely established community. And it has great extensibility with a wide range of plugins and third-party apps. And the cons are it's rather low future-proof in that you need to manually maintain consistency with the production UI. Framework X is a new design tool that empowers you with ability to code components in addition to the traditional vector tool. Pros are its ability to effectively manage UI updates between design and engineers. This is achieved by allowing both designers and engineers to reference the same source of truth. It provides amazing educational resources for you to self-learn useful coding languages. The skills you acquire by using this app is super future-proof. The cons are that there's a somewhat of a steep learning curve if you want to take full advantage. Also, it's a relatively small community and limited resources. Last but not least, I personally love that Framework X is a step forward into the future in trying to solve a known problem in the real-life production development environment. While it's currently a bit technical tool to leverage, a day may eventually come when they figure out a way to take a step back and deliver the same function with an easier interface. Nonetheless, 10 years from now, coding may be a common language. Like Generation Z on average already knows way more than my generation, and they're now joining the workforce. The answer could be that it's better off to start from what we have and what matters today than to wait for the right time. What is your choice between Sketch and Frameworks? Please comment which and why. And hey, you listen through, I think you want to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be posting all sorts of product design tips. So don't miss out. See you next time.